in the beginning. All right, guys, welcome back. We're going to talk about the character design assignment. This is the second time I'm doing this because I'm pulling my hair out right now and I'm really frustrated, okay? All right, first thing that I want to show you is uh, let's take a look at what happens if we scan an, Im an image in to um, Photoshop, okay? And we have this image like this, and we want to be able to get the line away from that dark tone of the background, okay? There's a simple way to do that. Let's click, let's take off the lock. We go to Control L, which is levels. We click the white icon. We touch the whitest part of our image, and the page turns to white, okay? So now I've gotten rid of the tone, okay? Sometimes you might have to get in there, and I've had to before go to levels, and depending on the tone of the paper, I've had to adjust it a little bit and add a little bit more white into it like that. But you got to be careful that you don't destroy part of the line work, and that's okay. Sometimes depending on the gradation of the tonal paper. So then you just click that white, hit the white area, and voila, the brown's gone and we're okay. So now we have that. We can work from that, all right? So that part's done, all right? Now let's go to the next part. Now let's talk about, for the second pass over here, how do we change the line quality, okay, and how do we get that to work? So first thing I want to do, let's create a layer down underneath, okay, and I want to fill that with just a, a base color, let's say. So I'm going to pick a little bit darker brown here, okay, let's go to G, and now I fill that, okay, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and we're going to change the line quality of these characters. I'm going to select all. I'm going to copy the line layer right here, okay? I just copied it, all right? I'm going to enter quick mask by pressing this button. It turns my, my screen red. I'm going to paste into my quick mask, okay? And when I paste, um, what we did before, sometimes you need to pay attention to what you paste in because you might have to inverse it depending upon the colors. But after I paste, if I exit quick mask, you see what I have selected now? I have just the line selected of my image. So look, now I can create another layer up on top. I can turn this off and I can, a couple things I can do. Let's, since these are all separate now, let's say I just want to fill them. Okay, edit and uh, let me pick a darker color than that brown. Let's say I get into, let's say we did a blue like this. Now if I come under edit, and if I go to fill right now, fill with foreground color, it's going to fill in that line. Okay, That's one option. You can take your brush, which can work to your advantage too. The difference with the brush though, is the brush is going to work based off of the opacity. right? So if I was very concerned, let's say I'm going to paint my character and I know the light's coming from the top here. What's really cool that I could do with the brush is I could start off on like 90%. Here, I'm going to hit Control H to hide my ants. And see, if I start at like 90% and start painting, then jump up to like 60%. See how it gets a little bit lighter? Then let's say I jump to like 20. So now I'm, I'm adjusting my line as I paint on here. Okay, I'm using my mouse, but now let me switch over here and see what's cool about using the brush sometimes is I can actually create a natural variation in the line quality and I can thick and thin maybe if I want that a little darker I hit a little bit more and if I want the eye to pop out a little bit more or an area here I can do that and that's a cool option especially if you're working in comics or you're doing any type of coloring to be able to do that very quickly if I go back to control H I can see my ants okay if I don't want to do that and you want to fill it with one straight color just do that. That's what I tend to do when I first start. As I come back under edit, I go to fill, and I fill the whole thing with a color. And the reason why I like that is because now I have that as a separate layer with nothing else on it. You see that? And what I can do now is I can select that hippo. Let's say I decide to paint that hippo more of a pink. Purple might not be the, the best outline. If it's going to be a pink hippo, I might come in here now to control U and hue saturation. And see, I, and I could slide this hue around until I get, look at that, a little bit of pink. I got a little bit of red. And then to really nail down what I want, I can go to control balance. And then I could say, okay, I'm in the midtone. I want to put a little bit more red in there. Or maybe I want to make it a little, a little darker, a little bit of blue, a little bit of a blue there. Okay, and see, now I have a little bit of a darker red. So do you see how I did that? I can now easily change the line of each character depending upon the paint. Well, let's get back into that. Let's talk about 
the hippos that we have here, okay? That isn't a hippo, by the way. That's something else. But in the options that I gave you, okay, you also have these guys right here, okay? These are like my version of uh, prehistoric hippos, okay? All right, so if I come back here, let's just take a look. When you're choosing your colors, let's look at the color variation in hippos. I just grabbed some of this reference. I'll throw it up for you. Look at how this guy has some pinks and reds in him, but he also has some dark earth colors. So look at this. If I swab right here and I look at that color and then I look at that, see that jump there? That orange sort of reddish, you know, a little bit of light tint. Look at that. That's getting into a little bit lighter. So I'm going to adjust my uh, color of my line to match the color of the hippo. So that was one hippo I wanted to show you. Look at this hippo. He has that dark color, and look at that. Those darks go a little bit different there. If I swab that right there, it's a little bit of a green. Even some parts in here look like they get a little, perhaps a little bit of a blue-green mixed in there. I'm getting closer to that blue spectrum right there. So I might have a lighter line that's a light blue, and then maybe I fade part of the line quality down here, because why? That is turning colors and changing colors. I'll put this reference up for you. Okay, look at that guy, depending on the light conditions. If I have a hippo in the water, it's in a blue water, the light that's coming through might change the color of the hippo, where I might need to modify the line to more of a blue than a brown. Okay? So it's really important. And then I know, look at, yeah, he's adorable until somebody gets him with an axe. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I'm just teasing. But look at his colors here. Look at there. See that color? Totally different color. Okay? He has a, a blue, and then look at his darks. His darks are brown. So I would change, if I was going to paint a hippo in that color, I would go for that type of color right there. Okay, or, And then I would modify the line to match something. I wouldn't want a bright red line on that hippo, would I? No, it wouldn't look sense. It wouldn't, it wouldn't make sense. It wouldn't look right. Okay, So I wanted to show that to you. Oh, we're done with that, by the way. That's from last project. Okay, So that way, and... Um, Close that. Because so that way as you're working now and you're going into your line, you have the ability to get in here and quickly change your line. So let's go through that line change again. Okay, this time we'll do it here. Look, I have a separate layer here. And here it is. Select all, select copy, enter quick mask, command paste, turn off quick mask. And there's the line selected. The reason why I did the inverse and screwed it up before is because the inverses believe the way that you do it when you don't have the background behind it. Because then you have to inverse the selection to select only the line, and that's the difference with the inverse. I can show you that in a minute. It would probably be fine. I'm just screwing it up, mixing the inverse in there earlier in the demo, and I didn't get it up. I didn't get it right. Okay. So now that I have that selected, I can turn that off. I can come over here to my line layer, and I can just go in, and let's just fill that... Don't use gray or black. You use a little bit of a color. That way the hue can be changed in the color. If I use gray or black and I go to hue and saturation, I'm not going to be able to really change it. I need to have something with color. But now I could come in here and I can say edit. And if I go to fill, okay, voila. Okay, now look. When it filled it, maybe I want it to be a little bit darker or richer than that, right? I hid the ants there. Look, I could come back in here and say edit. I could fill it again and watch what happens made it really dark. However, let's say I didn't want it that dark, but I wanted it a little bit darker. I could select that layer since it's just the line and go to levels. That's one option. Okay. Uh, a second option, too, is I can put another layer up on top of it. And then I could fill that layer. Edit. Fill. My selection's still there. Okay. You just can't see it because I hit Control H. But then what I can do is I can come back to this layer up here. If I hit Deselect now, and see, and I could dull that down a little bit and then get that to blend in if I want it to be a little bit darker than what I had. That's just an option. Just wanted to throw it at you. Or what I could have done is I could have just gone to levels with that layer selected and then just darkened it a little bit like that too. Okay. But the great thing now, let's say that my dad hippo is going to be a dark color because he's a dad. Okay. And then let's say this hippo over here I want to be a different color. Since this is all <laughs> separate, I could sort of go in here and sep just lightly. Look, I'm doing this really quick with the lasso. I'm just going to select around this hippo right here. Now that I have that, I can go to Control U, U and Saturation. Ah, oh, look at that. I could change mom to another color. That's a huge advantage for me. 
why not all my hippos are going to be the same color, are they? I got a baby, I got a mama, and I have a, like a dad there. I'm going to change your colors up. That's why when I did this version, that's how I envisioned them. Because I envisioned the dad having a darker, the mom being a little bit more with like pink cheeks, a little bit of red, and then the kid being this sort of blue. Okay? All right. Now, uh, that's basically it, what I wanted to show you. Now, let's just try this really quick. Let's say that you had your line drawing here. Let me see if I can get this to work really fast. Okay? Um, this was the problem before we had the white background. Let's say we want to select a line drawing and it's separate here, and this is the issue that I had happening. Select all, copy, paste. Oops, not paste. Hold on. Please select. Select all, copy. So I'm just on the line right now, right? Enter quick mask, paste, and then, um, well, it's still doing them. That's weird. Maddie and I had the hardest time the other day where it wasn't working for us, but what we were doing is when we exited quick mask, we would hit command inverse, and then we would we had a line that we could paint in. Anyway, it doesn't appear to be working, so ignore that part right there, because then I could show Maddie the demo and be like, hey, it didn't do it the way we were doing it yesterday. We had the hardest time doing it. But inverse sometimes is an option that you have to do. Okay? All right. So anyway, with that said and done, um, let me pause the demo real quick, and then we'll start talking about color. All right? Okay, now that we've been able to, A, scan our image in, separate, separate the background from it so we have just white. We talked about how we could paint under a multiplied layer, which is fine. But now we've also talked about how we could change the line uh, color of the character, which is really important. Okay, so now let's talk about blocking in the color. Okay, uh, what I do is I throw down, I'm, I'm going to, you know, this is going to be underneath. So if I have any type of paint that's under that line, because this is now just line. See that? And it's gone. This was line and white paper. Anything that I'd come down here and paint underneath that line, so if I come in here and if I start roughing out a hippo, do you see that? It's just painting right underneath it. Okay, that's great. That's what I want to happen. However, though, what I like to do in this case is I really like to use the gradient tool because there's natural gradients that happen, and I wanted to walk you through part of that progression on how I painted my hippos. Okay, so the first thing I did is I select that hippo. Now, there's a difference between selecting between these hippos and the other hippo. Does anyone know what it is? If I go to select this guy right now, he's e easy to select because he's by himself. If I just draw a lasso around him, and if I hit V, which is the move tool, and I hit one of my um, arrow buttons, it automatically selects that whole entire area for me, that line drawing. But that's a benefit is now I could come down with a layer underneath. And if I come over here and I go to G, which is my gradient, let's get a little bit more. Okay. So if I come to G, which is under the bucket tool, is the gradient right here or above it. And if I go like this, actually, it's selecting just the area I didn't want it to select. It's only selecting the line. So give me a second here. This is where I keep my line because now I can do this. See if this will work for me. No, it's not going to do it either. Um, wait. Okay, All right, so what I'm going to do right now is um, if I select it, save it as a path, it's just going to go as only the line. I want just the character itself, okay? And what I thought would happen is usually, you guys have seen me do this before, where I make a selection around an object, and if I hit V, the move tool, it selects just the core character itself. And so what I'm going to do is that I want to basically come in here and um, I want to select just my little hippo right there. I'm going to go back a couple steps because i got some lines on there. Let me take that off. So we're just down to the line. So what I'm going to do right now, this watch, it's only going to take me a couple of seconds here. So I'm going to take my lasso and I'm just going to drag around them real rough. Anything that I miss, I can come back and sort of paint in. Okay. If you save it as a path, though, it's only going to be the line. But now I could save it as a path, and it would have the whole selection. Okay? So I just selected him real quick around his figure. Okay? I'm not on the line layer, am I? That's up above. Okay? Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come down and make that gradient. I'm going to go to G, and watch what happens. Whoop, see that? That's how I start painting my characters. I get a gradient in there that's working. And what's cool is I can maybe, you know, that when I stroke the gradient that time, 
there wasn't enough green. Maybe if I stand it a little bit more. And that might be cool because I like to think about where the light source is or I look at the patterns in the animal. When I looked at this, look at the, the dark to light. See that? I might want to stroke a gradient going in that direction. Um, in this case, I might decide to do something else. Look at that. That's dark to light too. So it's up to you on what you would like to do. Um, it's your choice. That's what I want you to do is to try some different variations. So what if I did that and I stroked them down? Then it's going to be lighter here or darker. I want some contrast in the face though. So sometimes this is where I make decisions and I go, you know what, that green's a little too green for me. I need to select that and bring it back up to sort of the middle category like this. Now if I come in and stroke there, that might be pretty cool. I like the way that that's working. But still that orange is really bright. It's a little too saturated for me. So I'm going to pull that down and add just a little bit more down to about there, maybe over towards white and soften it up a little bit. And then come in and stroke a little bit. Let's see where I get with that. That's not bad. Let's say that I'm liking how that's going. Okay. All right. So now that I got that in, I'm going to come over. I want to just to be sure I want to label my line layer. Okay. And all my layers. I have line here. So I understand exactly what is above me. That's line. Okay. And I'm, then I'm going to lock it. Now I can't paint on that. Off and on. Now I just have a gradient fill that's underneath it. I made the mistake. I had pasted something else there before. Let me Command Z and just delete this layer real quick, just to be clean. I had a line left over there. There we go. Now I can do get that stroke in there. That's pretty good. Let's say that's what I want. Okay. So now if I look at this and now I label this, I got line up above, separate. See that? And I have just a gradient underneath. I'm going to put a lock on my line so nothing happens to it. All right. Now what I do is I'm going to come in here with my character. I did this on every one of my character studies is I just select areas that I know are going to be shadows. In order to do that, I have to ask myself, what direction is the light coming at? Okay, so I'm going to say, is it coming left to right, right to left? In this case, because of where the character is facing, I'm going to say this light is coming down in this direction. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to come in with my lasso, and I'm going to select little areas that are going to be shadows. The highlights are going to hit. Um, let me do this with another layer up on top. I'll do it with a white so you can see it, right? Let's... You should understand this from basic drawing. Highlights are going to be hitting right here. I'm going to have a highlight here on top of the nostrils there. That's going to have a highlight. Light might start here and then lightly fade off. There might be a couple highlights in here and then fade off. I might have a highlight on top. All the surfaces that are facing that light first are going to be hit. I'm going to have a highlight right in here on his belly. Okay, I'm going to have a highlight on the fingertips, maybe up here on top of the spoon. Maybe up here on the top of the leg, that's a cylinder, right? Therefore, it's going to be dark back here. Maybe here, here, here. Maybe on the fingertips, maybe on the paw. Uh, where else would I have a highlight? Anybody? Okay, on the top of the plate, that's right. So if I come here on the top of that plate, I might have a highlight. On the top of the ear right there. And then light's going to come down, right? It's going to come down in this direction. And then what's it going to do? It's going to come back and bounce. It's going to have reflective light. So I'm going to have a little bit of reflective light in the back here. A little bit of reflective light that is bounced from here that's catching under the arm right there. Okay. And then I might have sometimes you get a little bit of reflective light where an object is hitting the ground. This will be dark underneath. Okay. But then I have a little bit of reflective light to get those surfaces to pop there. I have to have an understanding of that. That's why every one of you, you know, should have had basic drawing and have that basic understanding of rendering and light and how form works with lighting. Okay. Now that I have that, what I'm going to do, and I, this is a great process, it's really easy. Look, I'm just going to select part of him, the areas that I'm imagining to be dark. I'm going to select part of that underneath right there. Light's coming down here, so maybe part of that arm is going to be dark. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to select part of that leg, and I'm going to try to think about the form of the areas that I'm selecting. Okay, Part of that foot is going to be all dark because it's facing away. I might have a highlight on the top. Uh, part of this foot that's going to be dark, it's facing away. And then high light will come down, hit here, so this will be darker up in there. Okay. Uh, the hand's going to have high light, but then look at the shadow. Look at the surface structure, too. I need to wrap my contour line or shadow or dark around that area. Light's going to come down here, right? So I might have a shadow that comes up like this on them like that. Okay. And then if I look here, this might have light hitting it, and this might start to get a little bit darker around that belly, and maybe a little bit of darkness in there, maybe there's a little spot there, 
I might have a shadow of the plate right in there. That arm might cast part of a shadow underneath. This might be a little bit darker and that end there. So I just keep adding on to it. If the white drags off here, it might be a little darker in here. Okay. Um, the back side right in here might be a little bit darker. Okay. So then what I'm going to do, this is easy. I'm just going to go to levels. Okay. Why is it not going levels? Let's try that again. All right. I don't know if that's the controller or what. Let's try that one more time. And levels is not popping up. I want, oh, that's why. The, um, I'm on the wrong layer. Now if I go to levels, and if I come here, I'm just going to darken them. I'm going to pull this to the side. See that? Boom. Darken shadows. I might decide there are shadows in there that I want to leave at that value, and I might want to darken others because the green was a little bit darker, right? So now I could take my lasso tool, and if I remember shift and alt, so if I go down to, to alt right now and I subtract that area up there, now I can come in here and darken that a little bit more. Okay? He's slept. So now I have some dark values on him. Uh, let me go to my line layer, take out the lock, and I want to drop the opacity down. That line's really bright. Okay? So once I get that opacity down, what I'm going to do now is come back into my character, and I got, I'm basically going to smooth that transition to go over. Now, there are different styles of painting. There is another style of painting where you don't have to smooth the transition, and you can actually just select an area, darken it, and that works. But for me and what we're doing on this project, I want you to smooth it over. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to take one of my brushes. So there's a couple different ways that I could smooth over that paint. Okay, Here's one way. As I could come in here with my brush, I can swab that color. I can drop down to about a 30% grade, and I can just come in here like this, and I can lightly paint. And then I take that little area there that I painted in, and then I just paint on top of that. And you see what I did? I just created a blend, a little bit more of a transition. Then I can grab that color, and then I can go down to like 10%, paint that in, and that's it. I automatically created a transition that's not nearly as hard edge as what it was before, right? That's one way. Another thing you could do is if you have smudge, okay, and if you pick a good brush, you could come over with smudge. And if I come over there really lightly, like at 5, 0, 5, or 10 percent, it's going to allow me to see to sort of smudge that edge in there. Let's jump up, depending on the brush. There, so you see that? Smudging in some values. So all I'm doing right now is I'm just modifying the local color, and I'm blending in part of these values on my character. Really easy, right? Nothing too complex. Okay. So let me do that really quick as I finish up part of this demo here. Okay. I do both. Sometimes I paint it. Depends if I'm in a mood. Sometimes the smudge tool doesn't work the way I want it to work. Sometimes it smudges out all the value. Okay. There. So look at where I am now. I have some value under my character. You see that? That's starting to work. Okay. All right. The next step that I like to do, okay, is then I apply texture. I think of some textures that I can put on my character that might make them work a little bit. There's a couple different ways that I could apply texture. One, I could go in there. So when we're talking about texture, what kind of texture would we have on a hippo right now? I could, I might have spots. It might be stylized. You might have little wrinkles that wrap around the skin. Okay. Sometimes I even just take a brush and I paint on top of it. So let me show you a couple variations that you can do. I like to come in because when I'm drawing and sketching, I put these little indications here for like textures. You see that? And then I could select little areas on my character. It might be texture related. Textures are great because they add a lot. And so now what I can do if I want is I can come into levels right now and I can darken these up. So if I go to control H, Okay, and I hide it and I go to levels now. See how I can adjust and create those textures on my character? It's a great way to wrap, shape, and form and you get a little bit of detail in there. That was one option. Let me hit cancel. What if I did this? I have that selected. What if I want all my textures, my layer happy people in here, might not want to commit to one layer? What if I said copy, paste, then I went to levels, and then I did it. 
Now I've just copied and pasted the information that was there and put it above on a separate layer that's now my own texture layer, okay? So that's one option to create some textures. The next thing that I do is I come in here and I'll take, sometimes I take my brush and I'll find some of the brushes I gave you have different texture variations. Like I have this one guy here, it's called Spots. So I could come up here. Let me say I want to make this guy a little bit darker and I want to put some more spots down in here. So um, give me a second and label my layers. That's local. This was texture pass number one. Okay, and then put TX1. And then I put another layer up here, which is I'm going to do my dots. No, that was my light. Sorry. I'm going to call this text two just to have it. So now when I do my dots with this brush, look at the way this brush is, is designed. See, as I'm hitting it, it puts some of these little soft dots in there, which is pretty cool. If I raise the opacity to 100, see, it makes a lots of dots. Okay, So maybe I come in at about 70. I'm a little darker. Maybe I just put some, some darker dots down in some dots down here. Tether in a little bit, like around that leg. Maybe it has like a little bit of freckles. Now when I get up here, Maybe he gets some dots are a little bit lighter. Okay. See, it just adds a little bit of detail that I can put on my character. It doesn't make it so bland anymore. You know, you might have some freckles back there. You might have a couple of freckles up here around his face a little bit, some up there. Okay. Maybe I put a couple more over here by his belly, like that. Okay, that's it. All right, so now I have another second texture layer, okay? Let's just save for sakes, we decide to create a third layer, texture three. Let me see, what other texture could I put on there? What if I have, um, what if I take a scratchy brush like this, okay? Um, and watch, what if I do this? What if I go for something that's a little bit more darker and um, it's on a separate layer, so what? look at what happens if I do that. See, I get that real scratchiness. What if I come over and I do something like that there? And I'm going to try to go with the, the curve of, of his body a little bit. Okay, it's a blue right now, but I can change that, right? All right. So that's another way to do texture. Now I don't like that blue. Let's say I can go. I can go into hue and saturation because it's a separate little selection there. So let's say I decide to go with something that's a little bit more like that. Okay. I've changed the hue on it. Oops. Let's try that again. I didn't hit. There we go. Let's say I end up somewhere something like that. Okay. I hit OK. It's on a separate layer. So now I can come in here. And I could mess with this if I want. If I turn it off and on, see all those little textures just create a little bit of variation in there, especially around here on the face, up on the arm, maybe coming over here on the belly a little bit. Okay. Whatever it is that gets your that you start to like, that texture adds a lot to the carrier, to the character and starts to get a lot more to pop out. Okay. Let me get a little bit something here on the hand. Here, maybe a little bit down here as well. Okay. So there, now I have that done. I'm going to go ahead, I have all those on separate layers. You see that one, two, three? I'm going to go ahead and merge all these, and they're just called textures. Now I have, let's just do a little backup there. We have our line, I have a local color, I have some texture on there, okay? The next two steps that I do, as I come in, I start to add some, a little bit of what I call like a shadow value. I select little areas and I start to put some blues on there, okay? Um, and then I'm also going to go in and start to do some whites, and that starts to pull out the highlights. And then I sort of wrap it up and adjust everything to fit to that. Okay, so right now, for blues, I'm just going to create another little layer up here. I call this my shadow layer. All right, now that I have that shadow layer selected, I can just come over here. I can just take blues, however you want to do it. It's up to you. It's personal preference, right? If I come in here, I like usually some of the softer brushes for this. Um, where's my soft brush go? There it is. And if, so if I come in with a soft brush, and I'm just going to sort of come in here and paint a little bit darker, especially down here by like the wrinkles where he might be sitting. Maybe that sort of wraps around here. 
part of that foot might be a little bit darker. I can adjust that in a second. Might have a little bit of a value change under that arm, a little bit there, maybe there under the side of the pan, maybe a little bit here that fades off, a little bit right there under that fold of the neck, maybe part of that fold in there. Okay, just gives me a couple more, you know, areas to improve. And it's, again, it's on a separate layer, so I don't have to worry about if I do something too dark, I can erase it, I can modify it. So maybe this whole part down here, he's got a little bit more shadow. He's got more shadow wrapping around down in here on the back side, maybe right here. And then when I get up in here, maybe some of this blends off. He's a little bit darker. Okay. And then I got part of the ear there that works. Okay. So I, I get him looking a certain way that I start to like. And then I'm going to come back in. And what I do, I keep that layer separate, that shadow. Because then I can adjust it and paint highlights on it and go from there. But I'm looking at my local color, and I still have some areas that I could adjust on my local color. Well, let's talk about that real quick. What are some of those areas? Well, look at that. I got the whole eye in there. That I need to adjust. So let's just go to uh, let's go to levels on that on local, and I can just suck out other way, make that more of a white like so. Okay, um, I might select part of this ear right in here. So the the inside it's going to be dark on that inside. Okay, part of that nostril right there it might be a little bit dark. The teeth tend to look better when they're a little darker too. All right, so if I go to levels, then I can paint a highlight that, that works a little bit better on them. Okay, so now I'm starting to define some little areas. I have this part of his foot here. Okay, and I get that foot selector there. Let's go to levels on that. That's weird. My keyboard doesn't work on the other side. The control doesn't. There, if I dark rate that now. I darken that a little bit. It's also getting a little too saturated. So if I go to Control U, I can come back here and I can pull the saturation back. See that? And it gets a little bit darker. Perfect. Okay. There. So let's say that's what I have right now. Let's come back up here. Let's now I can drop my line down a little bit more. Why? If I take off my line, you see how the character is holding itself now? Some of the values are starting to hold it, where I can lower down the line because I'm creating enough values to start to change form in there okay um so one of the the last phase that i'll do is that I, I need to come in here and do some blending and paint a little bit more but the very last thing that i do is i come in and it's sort of the magic part is i haven't talked about eyes yet I'll do that probably next week where i can just create a separate eye but i haven't put any highlights in the highlights are sort of like the magical part at the very end that brings it all together I do need to get in here. I need some more softer edges on stuff. So there is a point in time where I just take everything that I have. I know this scares the bejesus out of you, but I just need to commit to it. So I just take everything that's here. I commit to it texture based. And then um, I take, you know, if you want to paint on top of it, that's fine. But, you know, I just come in here, oops, my brush now, and I just start to paint. I'm not going to worry about the bowl, but I just come in here and I just start to figure out you know, how can I blend, get some soft edges in? You know, I have some different colors back in here. I never blended that in. Just working real fast in the demo here. So I might come in, paint a little bit more that color. I might get this to fade that back a little bit. Paint on top of that. And just, you know what I mean? Just come in and this is where I just sort of work on them and try to figure out, get some of that blue in there. I got all these little details you need to think about. I got the pads of the feet, right? And this little, I don't know what you call it, like a little toenail that's in here. So I just select some of this area here. Okay. So it's a process. I just keep building. Um, I'm on this other layer. So look, what happens if I come over here? Let's try. What if I go um, a little bit darker here? on the pads and then what if I change their hue a little bit to another color that's a little more a bit more offset Let's see if I get anything that's working it's not really working as well as I wanted it to with the hue so let's go to color balance and maybe I say you know what on those pads I just want to add a little bit more blue to it hold on that's why I'm on the, the layer above my bad 
if I go to hue, see now I might be like, hey, what if I make these a little bit darker like that? That's sort of cool. A little bit more red in them. Okay. And they're still selected. If I go to H to hide them, maybe I'm like, hey, let's go a little bit more. If I go control B, what if I like that red, but then I want it a little bit darker? So I can put a little bit more blue in there if I want. I can make these little adjustments now and start to clean my character up a little bit and get them to a better point. And the more attention to detail I start to put in here and start to paint with him, um, the more he starts to come alive and the more I can start toning down that line layer. So I can even start to tone that line layer, line layer down a little bit more because I have values that are starting to hold the character together. Okay. Um, so let's just real quick, because I, I, I don't want to do a demo that's too long. I'm already 24 minutes into this. This is where I come in. The, the best part of this is getting to do the highlights. The highlights are what really bring the character to life, and they change everything on him um, or her. So if I come over here, um, put a line up on the top here. Let me bring it down here. Let's go to brush, and let me just do this guy right here. And sometimes I don't go to pure white. Sometimes I select the green of the character and I just come up a little bit. And then I start with that. So I'm on this layer here. Let's label this highs. Okay. And so I'm looking at where my highs are going to be on this guy. Let's start off at like 50. And I just come in here. And basically I start to just, you know, imagine if that lip's getting hit. And then this fades off a little bit. Maybe he's got a little bit of a highlight right there. And then it just sort of lightly fades off. Try not to have this. Highlight and then straight. You need to, highlights tend to come in little bits like a highlight and then just sort of lightly fade off and then it breaks apart as it fades off, you know? And I'm not using the pure. I'm just trying to lighten up that surface a little bit where that lip's getting hit. So I'm not at pure white, am I? I'm at a really light pastel with, with white in it. So I might adjust and go a little bit lighter, and I get in here and render a little bit more. And when I get those highlights in there, it really starts to add a little bit more life to what's happening to my character. It's because you're turning shape volume by getting those little highs in there. You want to select a whole area, that's totally fine. Okay, and so by doing this, you know, picking little edges, the light they're going to be hitting. We talked about that a little bit before in the demo. Jump back up to like 60, 70%. Try to get a little highlight on top of that brow maybe comes over and so I'll keep working on this for a little bit maybe I have this chin fades off here let's see if I can get in here and punch that guy up a little bit more okay so it really starts to bring out little details on him Okay. Now, the one thing that's not working is I still have that nasty red line on there. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I need to get in there and I need to modify that a little bit. So let's go back to the line. I'm going to select this and uh, let me, let me minim, minimize. Okay. So I'm just building up slowly but surely in sort of this phase. Okay. Let's go um, to balance here. Actually, let's just try hue and saturation. See if I slide along, I might get another line that starts to feel a little bit better. See, that's a little better for that character, that little blue, because it meshes in a little bit easier. Okay. And then I start to come in, and, you know, this is where I look at my line. I'm like, well, maybe I want it stronger to darker. I could come in and I start erase parts of, of my line. I come in, if I'm like at 20, 
I'm on eraser, I go down to like 10% here. And like, you know what, that line is just really dominant around that. So I can erase some of that and get that to really fade in around that neck. And I, why do I want it to fade in? Because now I have the value underneath there of the neck, right? That's going to hold part of that together. And then I come back here and I fade a little bit off here. I fade a little bit right in here. Okay. Start fading a little bit more. Okay, so my, my character is starting to work now. And my highs, if I deselect, they're just more like just sort of light highs. I haven't even came in with like pure white or anything yet really defined. I mean, if I wanted to get in there, create another layer for this in case it's something I don't like. You know, I don't like to have pure white on everything, but there's a time when it works really well where I can just get in here and um, brush. If I go to like 80%, I can really hit that. See that? And that area really starts to pop there. But you got to be careful. Too much white highlight will really kill part of your what you're working on. Um, let's talk about the eyeball real quick. I haven't done the eyeball. Let's do that really fast at the very end here. So how do we do an eyeball? It's literally this easy. Um, create another line, another layer up above. Take something that you like. Uh, find a color, excuse me, find a color you like. Take the elliptical tool here. Hold shift. Create basically an eyeball like this, right? I'm going to come in here. Let's say I'm going to give him a blue eye right now. So I'm going to pick blue like this. Take my brush. There we go. It's blue, right? Deselect, come down. Eyeballs are spherical, right? So they have a little bit of a shadow. Select the underneath side, it's sort of like this. Okay? And I'm going to go to levels. Darken that a little bit. I might even come back into it again. Select the lower part. Go to levels. Darken that up a little bit more. Okay? Once that's done, now I'm going to come in here with my smudge or, or my paintbrush, okay? And I'm going to lightly get some blend happening in there. So if, let me go to smudge first. Oops, wrong tool. My bad, my bad. I keep hitting, there we go. I'm just going to go across that really lightly and get that to blend in. You see that? A little bit of a sphere effect, okay? Really simple. And now here, here's the best part. Here's the easiest part. You're gonna come in. You want to have like a. You want to create contrast. So you want a little, little like black pupil in there. That's what I like to do. Personal preference. I'm gonna come down here, select black, and I go back over here. And here I'll do this on another layer so I can move it real easy. Let's go to marquee. Okay. I'm on a new layer. Look, I'm gonna select this area right here. I'm gonna fill it with black. Edit fill foreground color there it is and then look at what happens when I bring that over on top of that sphere see how that starts to work like a little eye if I get it about let's say get it right there and then all I need to do then is come in and I just gonna put a couple little highlights on there so I'm gonna come back over let's switch to like a lighter blue or close to a white okay so highlights what are a couple highlights that I can do hope I have a light coming from the top I like to come in and just sort of put a smacked highlight like that on top of the eye and then sometimes I come in here and I put a little bit of an edge like this that fades off okay and sometimes I put a little bit of just sort of reflective light down here like that okay so I have a, an eyeball but once I zoom out if I take this guy oops see once I get him over there and then I transform a little bit get him into where I want there. So do you see how that eye starts to work now? I just made that really quick. And I might go in there and be like, you know what, too much of that white. Maybe I need that eye to fade in a little bit. It's going to tuck under that. So maybe this needs to be a little bit smaller, like so. Okay. And then I'm going to come with my brush. And maybe I need to have a little bit of a darker value here where it's tucking under part of that area. Maybe I'm going to get a little bit blacker there. Okay. Like so, um, 
Yeah, I do have this darker value here, like this blue. Okay, there we go. So when I zoom out, you know, it's not bad. I got a little eye in there. What's cool, it's on a separate layer. I have the white that's in there. So look at what happens if I come into hue and saturation. If I don't like that eye, I can change it. Maybe I can find another color. Maybe that's cool, that sort of green like that that's saturated. I could, I, you know, change part of his eye color now and get it to fit how I feel fits the character. Not yellow. That doesn't look right, but sometimes, what do you say, red? Let's go to the other side here. A bit more red in there, purple, blue. I sort of like that for some reason. I don't know why. A little bit of that green. Sort of like that, but it's just a cancel. Maybe I just leave it blue, then I just lighten it up a little bit more. Okay, let's say that's my eye. So I spent most of my time now just focusing up here. Um, I got, you know, I like what's happening here with the face, um, but I need to get in there. I could still clean it up, or I could render a little bit more, get some highlights. The teeth, I just put them as a dark value right now. That's okay. I'm going to go ahead and select the teeth, and I'm going to turn them. When I looked at hippo teeth before, they have sort of like a yellow tint to them. Okay, so I'm going to come back here to local color, and let's just go to control U. Let's see if we can slide this around and find another color that best suits us. Um, that's not bad. And then I can go to color balance and then add more yellow into that with the balance setting here. So there, I got some yellow happening. Okay, do you select? See that? And I got sort of like a yellow tooth. And then I'm going to come in here and I might select. Um, I could select a little area for the highlight or I could paint it in. So I might grab that. Let's come over here. Let's go to a lighter version of that. Got my brush, gonna put it like at 60%. I'm just gonna spike a nice little highlight up on the top. Now, something that I, a little secret that I tend to do to finish up my piece a little bit is look at what happens when I take off the line. See how that's holding together now? And I've done this in like 20 minutes. Imagine if I spend a little bit more time rendering him out, he's holding together. There are things I like about my line and things that I don't. So a lot of times what I like to do, let me label a couple layers here is I like to put a layer on top and then I start painting on top of my line basically to get rid of some of the other, uh, some of that line detail that I don't want. Okay, and I'm gonna do that right now, really quick here. So let me paint up above here. And by doing this, it allows me to come in here and get some really cool little highlights like right on part of that line color. Now hold on a minute, why is this not? There it goes. Okay. So yeah, I can get a nice little highlight on that tooth. And then I can hit like five and then just sort of fade it off a little bit and turn that edge. Okay. Maybe that was too bright of a highlight. If it is, I can just erase it. I want a separate layer. I might come in here, brighten up the front facade of that tooth a little bit. Okay. And I looked at before, remember I had that separate highs. And I realized like, you know what, maybe those highs are too bright in there. Maybe I need to dull those down a little bit and just paint a little bit more variation in there. So I'll come in here. Maybe I need to do some more texturing. Maybe now that I'm defining that surface and changing from here, I come back to my local color now. Look, and I can just do this ever so lightly. Because I have some cool variations happening in here. And then if I go, let's hide those and we'll go to levels. And I just darken them a little bit. See that? I created a little bit more detail in there, okay? So anyway, if I keep messing with it, my end resolve is going to be what I have here, okay? And you get faster, and I mean, there's some other things. Look at the little gradient I had in there of the pink in there. Uh, here I had some darks. So I'm looking at my guy, and I'm like, well, I just got some greens in here in his face. Maybe I need to do a little bit more uh, of that to him. Maybe I need to get some more gradients and blend a little bit more texture. Uh, I'm going to select the line and since I like the direction my hippo is moving um, I want to change that line a little bit more so this time I'm going to go to balance and that's going to be a midtone or a shadow thing and I'm going to see if I can't add oops it's off the line there we go balance and I'm going to see if I can add a little bit more blue and maybe punch up darken that line see how that fits them a little bit better now okay let's control Z and after let's zoom in here let me see, Control-Z before. See that? I added a little bit more green to the line. 
and it really starts to pull them together. And now, again, there's nothing wrong. Remember, if I lose a line, the character is going to look better and better and better. So now that I'm on my line layer, see how rough all this was in here? Maybe I need to come in here and erase part of this and get this to sort of piece together, you know, thin some of this down. Um, one thing I can do, well, doing that, I lost part of the tooth there, but that's all right. I can come back in, go back to my local color here. So I'm going to commit. I'm starting to get a lot of layers here. Here, I'm going to commit to this guy. What was this layer here? That's the light we talked about. Let's move this up on top here. I'm going to call this local. Okay. And then I'm getting too many up here as well. I'm going to converge all these together, except for the line. Um, you know what? I'm going to leave. Those are highlights there on top of the line drawing. So I'll leave some of those right now. And I'm going to commit to these highs and on that character as part of a local now. I'm going to label that local, so that's all local value. Okay, I need to get that tooth down there a little bit more. Um, a couple things that I need to do is I might get some of the line down there, but I can also paint it. If I want I'm in a hurry, I can just select part of it like this, copy, paste it, and then I can move some of it just down like so to where it's getting inside right there. And then merge that in. I need to come to the line and erase bit of that line that's right in there and if you need the line to be supportive that's all right select part of the line copy paste that saying if I just bring it down in there a little bit and if I go to my eraser drop down to like 20 percent and I fade that line in a little bit now it's around there it's on a separate layer I can duplicate that layer and I can bring part of that line over here to the other side like that so now I've got the tooth to fit in there a little bit let's converge all these together as one let's commit to it now I have a line layer Okay, all right, so there we go. He's coming alive. Look, I have some shadows in there. I still want to get in there and paint a little bit. I also want, we talked about little gradients that you can do. Let's talk about that really quick because I mentioned that here. That's something I really like to do when I get these little gradients. I like to come in and throw individual gradients on the character. Um, and that can really be a lot of fun. So let's do that really quick on another layer up on the top here. Okay, I'm going to bring that back in here. Let's move these together. Look, I've condensed layers. How many layers do I have right now? Fine. Well, that this doesn't count. I basically have four I'm painting on. Okay? I'm going to go up to the top here, do a cool little gradient. This is what I'm going to do. Watch. I'm going to select around the teeth here, in this upper little part, and I'm going to put a nice little gradient of color up in this little area in here. And then I can get that to fade in. Like there, so I have that little selection, right? I'm gonna hit Control H. Oops, hide that. Um, come over here. I was imagining something with a little bit of like a warm in there. What if I got something like that? And then going to a little bit of a blue, let's say. Maybe that's a little too bright. Maybe it'd be more of a boy color. And. I hit my gradient tool, G. And look what I just did. You see that? Throw a gradient in right on top of them like that. Okay. Now it's solid color, right? Yeah. But if I come over here and if I go to multiply or soft light or hard light, see, I could start to create some really cool effects on how that gradient might start to work or play into the character. Then if I ditch this down a little bit here, okay. And then what I can do is I'll be like, hey, maybe I like part of that yellow or blue there. And I can come in with my eraser. And I can just say erase, like 20%. And I could start to just fade some of that in, get that to dwell in the back there. And erase some of that off. Erase some of this blue part off there. And see, I just created that nice little transition, you know. And it is separate layer, right? So I can lay, let's say, I label this grade or grad, so I know exactly what it is. I can go to hue and saturation and be like, you know, maybe that wasn't the color I wanted. What if I change it a little bit more? See if I got a little bit of green. That's not bad. That adds a little bit of detail to them. A little bit more saturated. Let's take a look at some. Other. That's pretty cool too. On that other side, the green and got that to pop a little bit more. Sort of like that a little bit, where it gets a little bit dark and that gets a little hazy up there. Okay, 
that's the fun of getting in and getting to paint these guys as you start to let's say I like that one and keep that right there maybe now I want to come in here I want to commit to that okay now one of the problems is is if I merge this right now let's see if it'll do it it did it fine I'll just leave it sometimes when you merge there's an issue that happens so look I've merged that gradient in I still don't have any textures in here right so let's do that put another layer on top I create a couple more little splotty textures up there let's just say uh, here let's just pick another brush I have down here where's the awesome brush power of awesome here and um, let me get a little bit of a blue we'll get a little bit more of a blue green maybe All right, let me try 100%. Why is it not working? What's going on here? Oh, that's why. Man, I hit B. I think that's the recorder. I hit B, and what happened is it's stuck on eraser, and I don't know why. So let's go back to brush. There we go. Now it's doing it. Let's go to awesome in here. There we go. There it is. And now I want to get a little bit of texture variation going up there. I'm going to start real light and just paint a little darker above that tooth right there. And then I might come in and just sort of jump up to like 60 and see what happens if I stamp a little bit in there. So there, it just created a little bit. And I sort of like that. I might come down here and blend a little bit of that in there too. A little bit. Now if I come along some of the edges here, do you see that? And I get right along that edge and a little bit of that texture in there. It really starts to bring him to life a little bit in terms of the rendering that I'm doing. You know, I'm just keep building and building and building. So I like that. It was a little bright. I'm going to lower it down just a teeny bit, like about there. And I'm going to commit to it. Boom. It's all in one layer now. Okay. So if I come in here select this this is um, let's call this local again okay and so basically he's really starting to develop and I've done that just by a series of of gradients textures lines values and look what happens when I take off the line see how much more is holding together now the values are coming together to support him to where I don't need the line that's really important because you're gonna hit a point where you want to start to ditch 70 80 percent of your line the more you build up the values because that's going to make the character look more alive so as i come in here i might be like hey line guess what time to drop you down a little bit more and then i'm going to get in there so i dropped it down you know a little bit more and let's see let's see if i can go down to about 70 at all okay there i dropped down and now i need to come in here and where that line is okay i need to paint now here's the problem my local value is still underneath right so sometimes what I do is I create another layer, I put it above the line, and I call it my high local, local high, because now I'm going to come down and I'm going to paint on top of the line to hold part of the value, and I lose some of the line drawing. So let me show you how I do that. If I come in here and grab this green right now, look at what happens if I do this. See, I'm painting on the line, and I'm just hardening part of that edge. Do you see how I did that real quick? And now I'm going to come back over here, where his chin's wrapping there, and I'm going to harden a little bit of that. I'm not doing this, am I? I'm not putting a solid line on him. Uh-uh. That's too much. Thick and thin. So if I get this, and then I thin that off a little bit, and then I might come in here. Let me switch to uh, my oily hard edge brush. I like the way that looks sometimes. So now I might come in here like this, and see, I just sort of create a nice little hard line in there down here where the part of that's wrapping when I come back again here I never finished let's never got that guy blended in here so I'm going to get that that color blended in a little bit better because I'm doing the demo and there's some areas that I missed that I never paid attention to I leave fade some of that okay but you see what's happening now, I mean, I'm getting into so, some of those little finished stages, you know, especially with getting some of that line in there. Now that I'm painting on top of the line, it's really going to allow me to get in there and get some really nice little details. This is where you start to really 
you're rendering out because now you're the values you're painting down are the ones that are going to really hold together strongly okay and I'm not I'm doing it like I'm gonna do a little part right here and then I'll fade up and do a little part up here break it you guys know do you remember you ever heard of the the uh, gestalt theory okay the gestalt theory you know the psychologist the gestalt figured out that if he were to draw a line like this have a space, another line, and then another line, and you look at that, what you start, you don't see a circle, there are just three lines, but your eyes puts it together as a circle. So you do that with your values a little bit. I put a little bit of a dark value back here. My eye will link that value and that value together as one and understand what's happening and how areas are changing. I'm gonna have a highlight on there, so then I might darken under the eye here a little bit. I keep, you know, this is just noodling. I keep adding a little bit more, a little bit more. And I work my way down here and I start to come in here and noodle part of him there. But you can see the difference. You can see how much more rendered he's starting to get. So you got to give him some TLC. They need some tender loving care and you keep developing and working up from there and then it starts to come together. And at the end resolve, that's how you get to that level right there. That's how you get to that finished look. Okay? Thanks guys. I'm going to end the demo right here and we'll see you soon.